Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm going to show you how to modify the RC Pro of Mavic 3, which was released by DJI in March 2022. As you can see, I've got the RC Pro controller, a toolkit, and the Alien Tag Duo 2. The RC Pro controller has a screen and two quick release connectors. In this video, I will show you how to mount the Alien Tag Duo 2 on the RC Pro controller. The Alien Tag Duo 2 is a high gain signal booster that supports both 2.4 GHz and 5.8 GHz. After the modification, the signal between the controller and the drone can be significantly boosted and the image transmission can be much better. Well, I'm not going to talk too much about the Dual 2 today. Instead, I will focus on the modification. I've got a new RC Pro. As you can see here, it has a four antennae, two of which are PCB omnidirectional, and another two are panel antennae. It's the latest the OCQ3 system applies the MIMO technology, which means multiple input and multiple output, just for achieving boosted signal. Let me just uh, try it out by turning it on. So DJI products are of absolute quality. No problem with the starting up. This remote controller hasn't been activated yet. So here are the tools that I will use in the modification. A wrench 12 millimeters long. A T6 six angle screwdriver. A cross head screwdriver. And the straight screwdriver, which will be used mostly for prying. And here are a pair of Alientech QMA and IPX connectors that I will use for the modification. Of course, what I've got here are not enough. And there is also a secret weapon, which I'm going to show you later. The first tool I will use is the six angle screwdriver. So before officially getting started, I'll put the RC Pro on a pad to avoid any scratches on the screen. With a six angle screwdriver, I'll remove the six screws and take off the back shell. Just give it a bit push and pry. You'll be able to open it without using any tools. As you can see here, there is a 4G module.
And there are another two screws that you need to remove. Be careful that、uh, there are glues on the screws, and you want to remove the glues with a pair of tweezers first. Well, some users may wonder whether or not the controller is still under warranty after the modification. And、the answer is that、um, it will depends on the condition of the controller after the modification. So you do want to be careful not to scratch any part of the controller. There are another two screws that many people cannot find. They are quite important. If you forget to remove the two, you'll have problems taking off the back. Now let's take a look at the six screws that I removed. So before I show you the secret weapon, let me just cover the grooves of the RC Pro with the paper tapes so as to avoid any scratches. The controller is very likely still under warranty if there are no scratches on any surface of it, because we would not need to modify anything inside. No welding, no change in circuit, no nothing. All the modifications is all about taking part and putting back. Without the、uh, paper tapes, there could be、uh, many scratches, and the warranty may become invalid. So,、um, just、uh, putting everything back,、uh, you can make a warranty claim or resell it to anyone else. So what I'm doing is to、um, cover all the grooves of the remote controller. And make sure there won't be any scratches. Okay, perfect. So now it's time to present the secret weapon. It may look pretty scary, but actually, it's very, very helpful. It is a C clamp that you can find in a hardware or woodworking store. My C clamp can hold an object 300 millimeters long. The RC Pro controller is about 200 millimeters long. So before buying the C clamp, please make sure it is longer than your controller. And as you can see, I also covered the two ends of the C clamp. Just to avoid any scratches, and we can spin the rod of the C clamp to reach a proper gap. You may not need the C clamp to modify, but that will risk damaging the RC Pro, as there are no easily detachable parts.
So okay, as I just said,、uh, we can spin the rod of the C clamp to reach a proper gap. So I will just、uh, put the controller in the middle and、uh, press it against the one end of the C clamp. And the next is spin the rod of the C clamp to fasten it. Please note that the controller has a front shell and a back shell. And now I'm pressing both the two shells against the one end of the C clamp.、Uh, it is the right end, and on the other end, which means the left end of the C clamp, I'm pressing only one shell against the rod. So when I fasten the C clamp by about three to five millimeters, the grooves will open. Let's take a look at this side. Now I'm using the straight screwdriver to pry off the shell and see where it's easier to open. You don't want to pry too hard and scratch or even damage the plastic shell, especially when it's cold. I'm still prying off the shell, and see if it's possible to open the shell through the grooves. Let me just reverse its position so that you can see what the other side looks like. I'm going to use the same method with both shells、uh, against the one end of the C clamp, and only one shell against the rod of the C clamp. Then I will just、uh, spin the rod a little bit, and、uh, there will be more grooves. Then let me just、uh, use the screwdriver to continue to pry off the case. And you know there are snap fits inside, so you don't want to pry too hard. And when the shapes of the shells change, the snap fits will then be released. And I will just、uh, continue to pry off the shell until I can open it. Now I think it's already open, so let me just take away my secret weapon. Thank you. And now, as you can see,、um, all the snap fits are released, and the grooves are widening. As I have already dismantled several ones. And I know there are no other snap fits in the center. There is just a, an internal cable. So I just、uh, pull out gradually, and make sure all the snap fits are released. You don't want to rush here and break the controller because it's quite expensive. If there are still locked snap fits. We can always resort to the secret weapon. And now I'm going to remove the paper tapes. And take your time and don't break your controller. Now let me just、uh, remove all the paper tapes or masking tapes. As I said, there is an internal cable in the center, which you do not want to snap. Just、uh, gently pull out. 
and gradually you can see the grooves are widening if you cannot still open it just to use the straight screwdriver to pry gently Now I think I'm able to open it. Just remember there is an internal cable in the center. So do not snap it. This is what the RC Pro looks like inside. As you can see there are two batteries, two groups of batteries a cooling fin and a couple of flat cables so let me just remove the batteries they are two groups of 1A650 batteries in which one group has four batteries so in total eight batteries Next, unplug the fan connector, which is connecting to the back shell. And uh, now let's put the controller back on the pad. As you can see, there are four screws unscrewed, which are used for adjusting the joystick. Uh, they are not screwed, so you can just uh, pull them out. You don't have to fasten the four screws when you put them back, otherwise you will find that you cannot adjust the two screws at the center. So make sure you have adjusted the joystick before installing the back shell. Okay, there is another screw. And uh, let me just uh, next focus on dismantling the front shell. So first, there are two connectors we need to unplug here. Then there are a couple of screws that we need to release to open the shell. But before we do that, let me take off the panel antenna here. So I will use the straight screwdriver to pry. There are four points you can pry up. Just take your time, pry a little bit on each point and pry multiple times, then it will naturally come off.
Now you can take a closer look at the two antennae. Next, I will just uh, take off the lid. And to do that, we would need to remove the four screws. The screws at the two ends are self-tapped and are connected to plastic. That's why you can see the plastic on the screws. And the two screws in the middle are machine screws that are connected to metal. So I think it will be easy for you to tell them apart when putting them back. Now, I still cannot take off the lid because there are another two screws we need to remove. So I'll just uh, pry off the grooves here, which is quite tricky. Now we are able to see the two cross at the screws. So I'll just uh, unscrew the two screws. There are some snap fits here, so we need to pry gently to take it off. Just uh, push a little bit and it will come off. The complex cables may look very scary, but don't worry, you can succeed in the modification just by following our video instructions. Let me just uh, remove the screws here and take off the aluminum cooling fin. There are 12 screws in total. There are several connectors here for which we would need to remember their location. So another two screws that we need to unscrew. And 
And we need to remember the arrangement of the cables, the sockets, the location of the screws, so that when we put them back, we would know where to put them. The saddest thing would be that uh, we just forget to plug the sockets after we have already closed the shelves. So it is very important to remember the locations of the screws, the sockets, the cables, and connect them before installing the shelves. And here we are using a pair of tweezers to unplug the connectors. So before we take off the cooling fin, we want to make sure that all the screws are unscrewed. That's what we have done. Now let's take off the cooling fin. And please know that the bottom layer does not need to be removed. Up to now, we still cannot take off the cooling fin because there are another two connectors that haven't been released yet. So I'm going to just use the pair of tweezers to release the connectors. Now I'm using the tweezers to unplug the IPX connectors. And now we are able to remove the cooling fin. You can see there are many blue dots here and they are the thermal conductive silicones that are always wet so be careful not to touch them. Please note that the cables connecting the cooling fin cannot be removed. So next I'm going to take off the signal module here which is connected to all the external antennae. So I'm using the screwdriver to release all the screws here. Then I will just use my tweezers to unplug the um, cable connectors. Now it's been taken off and as you can see there are a couple of cables connecting to the signal module. And we can take a photo of the signal module because there are many cables connecting to it and we will need to remember the arrangement of the cables. And now I'm going to take off the cables.
If we take a closer look at the signal module, uh, you will find that uh, there are four cables and only the black one is connected to the external antenna. So it is really important to remember the arrangement of the cables because wrong connection of the cables will not boost the signal range, instead it will worsen the signal range. And then let me just uh, unplug all the cables here. Okay, so all the cables are removed and what we are going to do next is to replace the antenna. So there are a pair of the original antennae that we need to replace with the alien tank antennae. Well, it will be quite difficult for you to take off the original antennae, so I will just use uh, a knife to cut out about uh, one millimeter so that the antennae can be um, come off very easily. And of course, this will not affect putting them back. So I will just use the screwdriver to push it a little bit and press here and at the same time pull it out. Okay, so the two antennas have been taken off. Next, uh, we are going to connect the Alien Tech QMA connectors. They are actually coaxial cables, which are made of special materials, just to keep the best signal transmission. And that is why they are really fragile and are unlike ordinary current conductive cables. So when installing the coaxial cables, we really need to be careful not to snap it, not to break it, not to damage it. And uh, we need to use a wrench instead of nipper pliers. Squeezing of the cables may lead to poor signal transmission. So you really need to be careful here.
we need to make sure that the coaxial cables are not snapped, not bended, and not broken. Just uh, gently root the cables through and make sure the surface of the cables is not squeezed. And up to now, the coaxial cables are fully installed. So what we are going to do next is to put the antenna back to the controller. So, do you still remember the arrangement of the cables? I think the first one should be the white cable, and then the black one. So when connecting the IPX connectors, just make sure that the connectors are positioned right and you will be able to hear the sound of click when they are connected. And after connecting all the cables, just to fasten the screws. Then just to put it back to the controller.
Just remember to plug the cable connectors and fasten the self-tapped screws. Then just let me put the cooling fan back. And don't forget to connect the flat cables. Then fasten all the screws. And here we need to remember that we need to connect the IPX with the tweezers. Okay, so then we check all the arrangement of the cables again before finishing up. And don't forget to plug the connectors into the socket. And check the connections with the tweezers. You can use the tweezers to hold the IPX and use a screwdriver and uh, just uh, press it a little bit and make sure that it is positioned right then I will just uh, put the protective cover back and fasten the screws Let us check the connections, the screws, and the arrangement of the cables before installing the cover. Okay, so we've just checked and found no problem, and we're just going to put back the screws. With putting the screws back, just pay attention to whether or not there are any plastics on the screws, and then you'll be able to figure out where the screws should be located. The OCQ3 system of the RC Pro adopts the technology of MIMO, multiple input and multiple output, 
Uh, there are four antennae, which are meant to boost the input and improve the efficiency of signal transmission. Its disadvantage is that uh, it's not anti-interference, especially in high interference areas. So combined with the alien tag signal boosters, its anti-interference function can be deeply improved. With alien tag signal boosters, the antenna gain can be as high as uh, 15 dBi, and the standing wave ratio can be 1.2 to 1.3 dB, which is close to a military level. The RC Pro antenna has uh, 3 to 4 dB, for example, its omnidirectional antenna has a 3 dB, and its directional antenna has about 4 dB. But alien tag antennae have uh, about 13 to 14 dB. So the overall performance of remote controllers can be significantly boosted, no matter in terms of input or output. And the amplified output can be 36 dB after the modification, which means theoretically five times the range extension. In practice, the range extension can be about three to four times the original, depending on the flying environment. Now we have basically completed 80% of the modification. And once it is modified, we are going to try to restore the controller and see if there are any problems. So here we are going to fasten all the screws. Remember that there are four screws that are not fastened here unless you want to change the joystick and uh, we are not going to elaborate on this today. Again, please make sure that no cables are squeezed and all the screws are fastened. So if there are any screws you left inside the controller, please make sure you will get them out, otherwise they will damage the controller. Okay, so I think they are the last two screws. Okay, perfecto. So next I'm going to put the batteries back.
And before closing everything, I think let me just try to start the controller. Okay, so both the green and red lights are on. And here we can see the DJI logo. Everything is perfect. Great. So we've just completed the whole task. It's a shame that we cannot test the fly today because it is a modified for a customer. And we cannot activate it here. Okay, it's just a prove that all the connections are good and then we're going to put everything back it is much easier to put everything back than to dismantle it So please remember that the four screws should not be screwed. The four screws were not fastened when I received the controller from DJI. You can adjust the functions of the joystick by fastening the four screws especially the two in the middle. If you fasten the two in the middle, then the joystick are very likely to be fixed to the top. And I assume that owner users will not use such a function because you may risk losing your junk. And now let me just uh, put back the back shell and plug the connector into the socket. Now I'll just uh, close it. I'll just then remove the paper tape and press the controller a little bit just to make sure that it is fully installed. Okay, so when I fasten all the screws, then I've already completed the whole task of modification.
Okay, now we've just uh, completely modified the RC Pro of Mavic 3. Then let me just uh, connect the RC Pro to Alien Tag Duo 2. And let's try starting. Okay, so the lights are on. Everything is perfect. And we just uh, completed the whole modification. Thank you for your time.